And welcome back. Welcome back. <laughs> Sorry, I was setting it off. <laughs> Someone got a new game. So last week in Animal Crossing. <laughs> I think pretty sure uh, they have a RPG system for it. Excuse me? Why well, Animal not, Crossing? I'd like... be surprised. Hmm. Let's play. I, I don't know if it would be like a system. If more, I'm thinking more just like a splat book, if anything. Yeah, it exists. Oh, you looked <laughs> it up? So, uh, when are we going to start this campaign? <laughs> the universe rolls over. You all wake up. Welcome to Animal Crossing. <laughs> Why am I the only human surrounded by animals? What the fuck? <laughs> Where are all the I other humans? <laughs> I was gonna say that that would be a great thing to do. Like, say if you all like went to sleep or you all got knocked out, and then you didn't have like enough players to like do the normal campaign. You do that special one where they all wake up and it's Animal Crossing just for that one session. <laughs> and it was all a dream. And it was all a dream. You can see my character getting killed by bees immediately. <laughs> <laughs> That yeah, you have a massive fun legend reaction. That could actually be a fun uh, kids RPG, honestly. Kids first D&D. <laughs> they have kids first D&D. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, dude. I start with, like, minus 9,000 gold. <laughs> uh, I, forget, I forget what it's called. I think that it's, like, a very basic D&D module. I think it's called, like a, like, a Knight in the Tower or something. Yeah. It's basic D&D, &D and um, if, I don't know if we're thinking about the same thing, but they kind of remove or replace the death and combat mechanics with more of a subdue or chase away kind of mentality. So like, no, yeah, you don't I, stab the goblin through the head. You just <laughs> bonk him and he runs away as crying. <laughs> or you arrest them, or tie them up, or something like that. Yeah, P P PG D and D. Yeah, but just fine for kids. Exactly. I mean, it's, it's still fun. Oh sure. Um, you gotta introduce those kids to the harsh real world. <laughs> <laughs> like that ridiculous goblin anime show, whatever the hell it was. Goblin, Goblin Slayer. Slayer. <laughs> That's reality. Accepted. For anyone watching, do not watch that. <laughs> it is not for the faint of heart. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, as far as what we were doing... As far as what you guys were doing... Um, uh, ice cream. <laughs> no, no more ice cream for us because of a certain individual. Yeah, you've lost your ice cream privileges. Uh, <clears throat> um, but last, so last time you guys had arrived here in Weathertop, um, leaving uh, Amanita behind to talk to this horned king individual. But you all are here in pursuit of Ted, uh, your company scribe, and the one who generally. Uh, concocts all of the contracts for you. Um, using the black book to sort of uh, trace his presence, uh, you found your way to the ruins of Weathertop, the floating island upon which a once grand and magnanimous wizarding academy uh, was hosted. Uh, but now, as you can see, beyond through the uh, through the ruinous skyline, the collapsed rubble and heap of what remains. Um, so you guys are standing in the High Tower Company Tavern. High Tower Company being the prominent uh, holder of tourism in and out of the Weathertop Floating Isle. 
Uh, they've been charging exorbitant fees for rooms, uh, but decent for food and beverage. Uh, there's also an ice cream shop, which you guys had some fun with. <laughs> we. But moving on, uh, you guys are uh, awaking this morning with your friend Amanita in tow uh, and heading towards the ruins. Was this before uh, or after the two gifts eyes met across a crowded room? Uh, that is where we resume, is that you, Amanita, being a gith Zarai, have spotted a gith Yankee across the room. Uh, almost uh, a mirror opposite in the naturalistic sense, and that he's sort of covered in animal pelts. Um, like, he looks straight out of the uh, the astral boonies. Um, Friends, do you know this one? Can't say I do. They are not to be trusted. I don't think they have anything to do with us, so... Let us continue to make sure that it stays that way. I just think I am agree. surprised to see one of the people here. And why is that? Uh, he's he's just returning like a nasty stink eye, but he hasn't gotten up from his table. If you have no business with him, let's just get home with our little jelly adventure. Yes. What have you I've found? Been... Let us, in fact, discuss this elsewhere. Where it does not stink so much. I was going to say, where we actually go to talk about that, and like, without this company, just outside going to where we were going, I suppose. Good. Alright, so, uh, yeah, you can head outside and maybe find, like, a discreet alleyway. I'm trying to remember what we exactly discovered other than it being a lead kind of dungeon of the old college. Some crazy guy mentioned a back entrance into the dungeon. Oh yeah, the drugger. He wanted drugs in exchange for information. Can't Those say I have cops. much in the way of drugs on me. <laughs> I bought some potions. Ah, excellent. I was mildly concerned that our numbers would be fewer without me along. We avoided conflict in that time. Surprising. That is against our normal method. Perhaps not for the want of trying? Oh yes, I didn't did try, that's for sure. So speaking of, where is our bear friend? Ah. Uh, remind me, uh, Sean, did we give him a name? Or no? Ermum. Ermum. The mum of Er is residing with the Horned King in his court. Oh, so you took him to where he needed to be. Indeed. I could forget that is about as much as I might reveal to you. It is known their ways are secretive. I believe the tavern owner, um, the one that, you know, 
does the rooms. Um, they had a map of the first floor of this this place, at least. Of this place, the city, the rest of the mm. the ruins we're apparently going to. There was an academy that fell from the sky, and now that is some ruin. And that's uh, where we'll find Ted. One might expect yes. anything falling from the sky would tend to ruin, yes. We've also heard that this place is heavily trapped. Probably has mm-hmm. more dangers in there. It may also contain interesting specimens. Perhaps some slimes or molds. And treasure. As I said. <laughs> but see, who, who did actually sell them out? Weren't they asking a lot of money for it? It was something I thought I was talking to. Uh, it was the one with the anti uh, brain talk goggles. Oh, the one behind the counter, yeah. Are yeah. you sure it was him? I think it was like a gnome. Uh. So there were two individuals. You received information that uh, the High Tower Company uh, is very likely in possession of some maps to the ruins. Um, now you haven't really brokered any negotiations with them, um, so you don't really know how far you can get there. The other situation was uh, merchant you had talked to. Uh, a former student of the academy when it was in its heyday. Um, And the information you received there was that uh, in order to move around the Grand Castle, uh, the usage of special port keys, as he called them, were necessary. Um, Yeah. And and that's where the map came from. Yeah, and he he had a map of the first floor. But it was... Thousand gold? Qu- quite a quite a hefty price he was asking. Yeah, I believe he was asking for fifteen hundred gold, something like that. It was a lot of money. <laughs> and you said the high the high rise people had maps of it. Yeah, the high tower people. Uh, wait, wait, hi, who are the high tower people again? Um, you've only you've only sort of interacted them with like, uh passing grace but the the tavern that you stayed in uh, is owned by them so is is it like a sort of like a guild or something uh you could think of it as a um neighborhood of society (laughs) more more like a less so like a neighborhood watch and more just a um like a travel agency much like your... like sure. like much of much of the tourism for uh weathertop is under their management and do they have a do we know of a centralized uh, office if you will uh you have yet to ask around these ruins that you speak of is this where you will find ted Presumably, because uh, speaking of character, um, do we actually get sort of information that was? Oh, it was from the shopkeeper, wasn't it? The ice cream guy that was going in that direction or something. Yeah, uh, Klaus, the owner of the ice cream shop, had shared with you that he had seen an individual matching Ted's description alongside another, the the pale um, man. Yeah, this the strange pale man, uh, who sort of gave off like a weird aura. But um, he had overheard them talking about heading towards uh, the Weathertop Ruins. Peculiar. Ted was sent to recruit members. Why would he head to the Ruins? Well, we don't even know who the pale individual is, which is even more curious. It is known that the more that one does not know, 
more opportunity there is to make it known. Well, we're going to hopefully find him in these ruins, and I say we approach with caution. Don't like the sounds of this. And then you rot it in the book. <laughs> sure thing, boss. So, Matchett, you can acquire things temporarily without paying for them, right? Oh, so he can do crimes. <laughs> I didn't say crime. We can all do crimes, Arden. But he, he's allowed? And your boss isn't? Well, you see, the thing with doing crime is if you get caught, it's a crime. And yeah, not until your buddies bail you out. <laughs> Technically, it wouldn't be a crime um, if you could acquire one of these maps. Uh, I only need to see it for a few minutes and I can copy it. Well, if we can hit it for a few minutes now. How, how long can... are we talking about? So, it's a time crime. <laughs> but you can return the map afterwards. It just requires a bit of distraction. Timely crime. Well, we yeah. know he's great at distractions here. And we'll softly pat Arden on the back. Oh, no. Me? Distracted? Definitely. Yeah, so we find out where the map is, Arden distracts them, Merchant steals the map, I copy the map, and then we have a map. I'm afraid I'm the most inconspicuous fella here. That's why That's you're perfect for this. No, I can't argue go... with it, Logic. Well then, shall we find these maps then? Presumably, the pirates have used the moss screen. We could just go in there without a map. I mean, who has a map? Do we know? The uh, owner of the tavern? I think there are some others. Someone I know, but I don't know where he would keep it. But presumably, there is more maps with this company that has situated themselves here. So maybe if we ask them to see them, we can uh, do some magic. Maybe. Again, I guess we'll just try to find someone of maybe back a guard to where we can actually get to this like Central office for the high rise people. I saw yeah, right. The gang's all here. Hello. Hey. Welcome. <laughs> Basically, just Keep getting this a summary, so good timing. <laughs> yes. We're planning to uh, see if we can. Borrow a map. We're so, planning uh, to kill somebody for their map. <laughs> we didn't say that. Well, that might work out. Oh, it definitely could work out, but there's more evidence. Yeah, we'll try your way first, and then we'll try my way. Oh, uh, Mark, can I have another link to your uh, stream for whenever you start? You have a friend who wants to watch. I've got it. If Snap. Okay, you, it, you can. It's easy. It's easy to remember. It's literally Mark of the Dragon. Like I said, you can you can left click him in the Discord and then watch stream as an option, and I'll tell oh, you that. Oh, it's there. Okay, that's that's a viewer. <laughs> yeah, we're becoming I famous. Did not know Discord did that. Yes. Yeah. Well, it tell it tells if you have a link, then it tells you when you stream in, so it links you to the stream. Huh. Uh, Pretty good. Something new every day. You can disable it. <laughs> I was gonna say, Discord scares me a little sometimes. <laughs> yeah, you gotta configure it to where people can't stalk you. I love people stalking me. Ooh. Are you, are you sure about that? Love it. <laughs> are you sure about that? I it's all fun it. and games until they name their pig Misery. <laughs> 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 Uh, 
and then I reverse stalk them. Reverse stalking the stuff. <laughs> anyway. He's just and, a young nerd, so that's and all. And then we kiss. So, uh, just to catch you up to speed, the Black Book Company is currently discussing how to acquire a map of the first floor. Wait, just the first floor? That's it? Yeah. All, all, that's all you're aware has been mapped. The oh. other floors haven't been gone through. Too yeah. dangerous. Aren't the first how, floors clear? I was going to say, how extensive is this place that we need a map for it? Uh, massive. Okay. It's a rune for an old college of mages, isn't it? So it's got to be huge. Yeah. yeah, it's an academy, so you presume. I mean, Hogwarts be... wasn't that big. Come on. <laughs> I'm sure all the traps are clearly labeled on the map, so that'll be great. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be convenient? This is where he lost his leg, this is where he lost his arm. Oh, that's it, we got told not to put a hand in something. I forgot about that. The statue. Yeah, I didn't uh, fucking yes. forget. <laughs> I just remembered. I just imagine oh. when he's oh, to reach he for he's like, mind, oh, wait a minute. Mind, all these informations. Yeah, Don't wait, uh, at, at Nama, the Gith Yankee told you that about uh, someone that went in and stuck their arm inside a sculpture's mouth, and uh, they or didn't the have that arm right again. Yeah. I think That's, he that's right, because it, it was the left arm, because he's all right now. <laughs> <laughs> Son of a oh, bitch. That just oh. I think and I, I think there was a very specific wording he used, too, that the, the arm was just annihilated and it was gone yep if the story was related by a gith sarai that may be the case but if a gith yankee told it you may rest assured he shoved the arm in well regardless it's useful information so no arms in holes right Adam? No petrified fingers. I want. I want. I want an agreement. As, uh, um, it is no I think my arm is stronger than a statue. Yeah, but it Obviously. might be magic because it's a magic kind of. So no arms and holes. Okay. What if these are trishy? Then we'll use a stick. I don't know. Not your arm. What if I turn you back into a skeleton? <laughs> If someone in. wishes to stick their arm in a hole, it is not our place to kink shame. <laughs> Quiet, you. Just make sure you have enough lubricant. I'm Anita Geets. <laughs> this gaping can, hole is there? How can I not stick can, my arm in? Can, can, can we get going, please? Can we, can we move on? What? What's wrong? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's all right. let's find the high rise people, please. Uh, yes. we're, we're making him uncomfortable. That's all. Yeah, let's carrying on. Carrying on, please. Operation map steal. Have right, you considered go. purchasing this item instead? No. Perhaps we should. I expect it will go much better than our usual escapades. Tend to. I can't stop these boys from pursuing their truth. I don't think you ever try to begin with. And Why I'll just wait for something over that there. We're acquire briefly for a temporary amount of time. We're going to. Everyone is wanting to borrow it, quote unquote. No, I need to borrow it. Goose will look at it and remember it, and then we'll put it back, and everything will be fine. Ama just gives a slow shrug, like it's not his place to, to question. And you three uh, can be the great distraction, we'll call it. Defer to the leader to see what he wants to do. I'll give you jurisdiction over this plane. It's all yours, boys. All right, then, let's go. Okay. Yeah, and uh, I think Merchant would, well, I presume we'd leave the alley and try to find, uh, you, there's, there's guards around, isn't there? It's like mercenaries. Uh, the, 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 the mercenary guards, I presume they'll have an idea of where this high-rise, like, 
people are going to be. Yeah, there's definitely a couple of them around. Uh, are you going to try and hail one over? I just walk up to one and ask. I'm a leader. Okay. Uh, you walk up to one such individual. Uh, appears to be a woman. Uh, blonde, fair skinned. Um, fairly average overall, but she turns around, kind of quirks an eyebrow. Goes, oh, uh, hello. How can mm. I help you? We're looking to buy a map of the ruins, and apparently there's a place to buy one. Huh. You and everyone else here. Yes. Yeah, do you know where we can get one? She folds her arms. Well, as I understand it, the High Tower has some maps. But as far as I know, you either make your own going in, or uh, you buy one from them for a nominal cost. Well, that would be appreciated if we knew where that was, then. We would like to go purchase a map. Uh, she gives a nod and just kind of uh, points around the corner, uh, giving you sort of like the seminal directions, you know, take this right, second left, arrive at the uh, High Tower Company headquarters. Can't miss it. All right, then. Thank you for your time. I think that the merchant would swiftly move, and uh, hopefully the party follows. Of course. Uh, Amanita, roll a perception. Tony's taking it sweet as time. You get a faint feel it. You, you get a funny feeling like you're being watched. But as you kind of turn over your shoulder and kind of look around, you don't see anyone within view. Because I didn't you see someone in the other town. I don't think I led on to anyone. Fair enough. Hmm. No matter. Surely it is just being in a city again. He continues on as normal. Alright. Uh, following that, you guys follow the mercenary guard's instructions and find yourselves before, indeed, a building that you cannot miss. Um, it seems to be perhaps one of the newest buildings in the high-rise district. Constructed... At least the first level is constructed out of marble, with the sequential floors leading up to a... what looks to be a fifth uh, being made out of a... Uh, bright reddish pinkish set of bricks. Um, and there, seem, there seems to be folks moving out. Um... Some of them are sort of uh, adorned in these finely tuned robes. You also see little groups of adventurers moving in and out of the main doors. Busy traffic? I'm sorry? I said busy traffic. Uh, I presume we can just walk in then to the kind of like main entrance. Uh, yeah. Let uh, just make his way inside. Yep. Upon entering in, uh, you are beset before a uh, rather well lavished marble tiled lobby. Um, Forest front and center, there is a concierge desk. Um, and all around, uh, you see uh, various groups of adventurers kind of chittering and talking amongst one another. Uh, as you sort of walk in, you catch a few glances peering over in your direction, uh, and you get the impression that uh, everyone is here for the same reason you are, to find a way into the ruins, um, but through some manner of assistance from the Hightower Company. 
All right, I guess we'll see if there is a representative sort of available to talk to. Uh, indeed, there. I said there's a concierge desk. There seems to be uh, an elderly gentleman sitting behind it. Um, he's kind of dressed in a dark purple robe um, with pink trimmings. Uh, and he kind of has a gaze about him that seems uh, to allude to a a deeper presence of mind. So he looks smart. Uh, he looks smart. That's <laughs> <laughs> what I was getting with the kind of description of his clothes. Yeah, and he's, he seems to be attending to some, uh, some little scrappy group of adventurers who kind of pluck pluckily go around the desk into the door behind him. Fair enough, uh, Kind of approach when I can to talk to him. Uh, his gaze meets yours, and you see just kind of like a, a hazel, silvery iris. Um, but he doesn't say anything. He simply he seems to be waiting for you to say something. Uh, hello. Kind of looks to the rest of the party. Greetings. Uh, we heard we can purchase a map from your group. Yes, High Tower Company offers transactional services with reconnaissance and information concerning the ruins of Weathertop. If you are interested in purchasing one such map, I can offer you a quote. Uh, by all means. Uh, our latest edition. Uh, rated quite favorably amongst the adventurers who have surveyed it, uh, is going for 2,000 gold pieces. Jesus. That's uh, quite the price. While this is going on, is there any um, sort of adventurer that looks slightly twitchy? Like it's their first time? Oh, sure. You, um, <laughs> like, at least half of the people here look like that. Um, okay. Like, you you just sort of scanning out just at first glance. A lot of these people look like it's their first adventure. Um, okay. um, I'll just pick one at random. Give them some sort of telepathic uh, demonic whispers in their head. Just see what happens. <laughs> uh, stop, okay. weed, stop weeding out the competition. <laughs> so you're, you're just like telepathically sending them like weird chanting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get rid of these losers. <laughs> uh, the person you target immediately gets up. Let's Fuck! I gotta get out of here! And he runs out the door. <laughs> oh, look at that. everyone in his way. Wait a couple of minutes. <clears throat> <laughs> the man behind the desk sort of shakes his head. There's always one. Um, yes, but anyways, the price of the map will run you 2,000 gold pieces. Of course, if this is outside of your bounds, we can't do offer a Leverage package. A leverage package? Yes. See, there are many items of note and of prominent value within the ruins. Um, in this transactional phase, we simply lend you the map in exchange for 80% of the cut. What if there is no cut? Uh, if you don't return with anything upon going into the ruins, then we do charge a fee of 500 gold pieces. Well, then we better find something, shouldn't we? That's the idea. 
Of course, you can buy the map outright, but these, again, these services are offered so that even these whelpling adventurers may strike their fortune against all odds, he kind of says with a subtly sinister smile. Uh, Metro asks, is that, do we buy it from y the map from you, or do we go somewhere else? You buy it from me. I put in the order. Once the order has been processed, uh, we get back to you with an addition. We have to create the map. We don't have, unfortunately, a surplus on hand. There's been quite a flux of adventurers coming in lately. I see. Can I just uh, tap the chin over his mask? So, uh, let me talk amongst my company of what we want to do. Oh, sure. And if you're interested, we do offer rental equipment services. Although, I can tell from first glance that you and your company are experienced and may not need such benefits. Can I give us a, a wave of his arm? It's like, Blackbird Company? So, yes, experienced indeed. Ah, Infamous Black Book Company. Interesting. Okay. <laughs> Infamous, I see. Hmm, I am curious. You must admit your company has a reputation. Oh yes, I can wager where that comes from. As he sort of gives a cyber glance towards Arden. You can't blame it all on Arden now, can you? You'd be surprised, my son. I am curious. If it is your practice to rent equipment to inexperienced adventurers, surely you must frequently need to revisit to reclaim lost equipment when they are inevitably eaten or torn apart. Is this the case? The elderly man gives a small smile. You're quite keen. Keener than most. Yes, indeed. Renting out equipment does come with certain jobs that need to be done. Unfortunately, the ruins are dangerous, and not everyone has the good fortune to say they came back alive. As it should be. Is known Survival of the fittest is the world's greatest truth. Besides which, perhaps we could offer our services to reclaim some of this equipment for you. Perhaps for a discount, for example. He kind of juts out his lip a bit as he muses the possibility. Normally, we have runners to do such a task. But it would save us a lot of work. Wait right here me. a moment. Let me confer with my boss. I expect it will also save you certain funeral bills for said runners as well. Fortunately, our runners are quite skilled, but... Nevertheless, I'll be back in just a minute. As he gets up from the desk and uh, moves to the doors behind him. Um, it only takes him maybe another five minutes before he reappears and sits back down. Yes, I think this deal that you proffer could be within our uh, purview. It could be agreeable. We're willing to offer you the first floor map, uh, but you must find some expired contracts for us. It sounds like a good plan. With that, he uh, sets down uh, five contracts. Um, each of them not only have a name, but they also have 
uh, a special number or um, basically like a hash, like a little hash key. Okay. On each of these contracts is a unique identifier that directly links to the rented equipment. Should you find one such corpse or remnants of one, and should the equipment be intact, you will find one such unique identifier on them. Now, much as a number can be written in serial form. Yes. Indeed. However, I will need you all to sign this contract as he slides forward another uh, as well as a quill and inkwell. This isn't magically binding, is it? I'm afraid it is. We take our contracts very seriously. I'm sure you understand. I suppose. Exactly what is the magic? Oh, well, it helps us locate you in the eventuality that you also perish. Just taking precautions. He kind of would turn back at Arden at this point. It's like, is this good to you, boss? Perhaps we should read it so that we may know its contents in full. <laughs> this is why you're smart one of the group. Um, Front um, and back. Listen to me, Amanita. You can read it, boys. Go ahead. All right. Pick it up and start reading, then. Okay. Uh, Let me spot any... my reading glasses. <laughs> do, do you have any... check, probably. <laughs> yeah, so I was going to say, do you have any like? relevant uh, skills handling legal documents? Uh, investigation? Look, look uh... At Yeah, you could roll investigation. All right. Okay. Uh, it, it takes you a, while, uh, a fair while to start perusing through some of the articles. It's also written in an inconveniently small font, so you have to kind of like hold it up to your face. <laughs> and I'm wearing a mask as well. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I mean, th these aren't handwritten. It seems that like they're built in such a way that they can be mass produced. Ah, it must be a HP printer. <laughs> Using the zoom function. Um, <laughs> but as, as you start reading it, a lot of it again seems fairly reasonable. Um, just querying the Black Book Company, uh, handle the five contracts enlisted, and there kind of gives brief summaries of each. Um, in exchange for the renting of one uh, map to the uh, lower sects of the Wizarding Academy. Uh, but with your 22, uh, you do catch one little loophole. Um, in that any goods and items retrieved from the ruins uh, will be retrieved from the party by the high tower company at a 60% commission rate. So 60% of what you acquire will be taken by high tower. That sounds awful. Well, uh, we already made an agreement of it being less or is that already lowered from what's the, expected? The, the initial agreement was 80%. That sounds rate awful. 80%. Yeah, you still you still lose a majority of the treasure, but not not as much as the initial contract. So what it's worth they take sixty percent of the eighty percent we're already <laughs> No, like just sixty sixty percent instead of eighty percent. That's still very Ooh. Oh fucking hell, Lazarus. I'm sorry, my mic disconnected. <laughs> Likes to make noise. <laughs> Die! I don't, I don't know why it does that. <laughs> <laughs> laughing. It's not funny. 
<laughs> it's pretty funny. <laughs> Do we keep the 60% or the 40%? The 40. You, you keep the 40. We're, and before it was 80, so that's negotiated down. Okay, I mean... There's nothing in this contract that says they'll know if we have items that we're keeping from them, does it? Uh... It doesn't explicitly say so. Um, but it does give a little addendum at the bottom that saying that the High Tower Company does possess the means to identify whether or not you are uh, not being as forthright with your bindings as you might declare upon returning from the ruins. This totally. Sounds like <laughs> a lie detector? Stuff. Or a cavity search. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Ross, we don't get excited. It does not <laughs> lose sight of our actual goal. It is not the fat loots, but rather to find our companion. Well, I think half of us are here for that, and the other half is here for the other thing. Well, rewards are always a, a pleasant thing. I was going to say, I presume that the Metro would just tell the group that obviously it's 60%. Are they particularly happy about that? Or happier, should I say? Well, I haven't got a coin to my name, so something is better than nothing, I suppose. I'd like to negotiate the contract with them if possible. Okay. And that they can have all the treasure that I find, uh, as long as the one item that I am looking for, I can keep. <laughs> okay. Uh, the individual at the concierge desk uh, gives you an interested look. Sure, we can work that into the contract, but I would be keen on knowing what this item is. Oh, it's it's a weapon. It may or may not even exist. Merchant. Yes, sir. I presume you wish to me. <laughs> it's another squid situation, Merchant. Another what? It's another squid. It's taking the trouble of his brain. Oh, tell him to look for this item. You shouldn't. How does he know it's there? Wait, who's told him? We squeak. know who told him. Are you guys you, done? You, you, didn't, you didn't tell us, didn't you? Uh, about what? About how you found out that that weapon was there? Maybe. I'm just trying to because I, I feel like you, you like don't get angry, but I talked to the weapon. I know the other half's here. I'm like, oh, okay then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I'm pretty sure that happened. Yeah, so we already know I didn't. This, this is not out the blue to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was. <laughs> no. <laughs> the, the the how and the why is uh, kind of up in the air, but you know it's a thing. We know it's there, uh, we know kind of where you got the information from, but that's pretty much it. You know it's something I want, which probably means it's something bad. Yes, I imagine it's very aware of that. Uh, the person at the concierge desk is gonna... ...unfortunately come back with a rebuttal, saying that... ...ultimately, they would need to appraise and ascertain the true value of this item to see if it's actually worthy of you giving up the rest of your retrieved inventory. It turns out that they don't think it's worth all the inventory goose gets. I'll give them all of mine, too. Some things are priceless, though. Genuinely surprised that someone else would offer their stuff as well? <laughs> 
I got nothing to lose. <laughs> this would be a great place to uh, gear you up. It's like it's like we're uh, high level MMO characters and we're taking you through a dungeon and you're getting all the loot. You're power leveling <laughs> me, is that it? Yeah, exactly. And I'm gearing so, you up. So counter counter argument. Um, all of the stuff that me and um, Alcott finds. Uh, uh, in exchange for no questions asked about this one item. I was going to say, you'd, you wouldn't know his name, would you? It'd be Grief. Is it Grief? Grief. It's Grief. Yeah, yeah it grief. deluded me for a minute. Yeah. Why, don't you, uh, why don't you change your nickname on Roll20 through the gear icon to uh, Grief, just for... Okay. I, so. I noticed that um, Mark has everyone's like actual character avatar showing, too, and I'm trying to figure out how to get that to happen myself. Uh, I think well, that's stream setup. Yeah, that's that's, yeah. that's an overlay. You just got. Uh, yeah, that that's something I do on my end. Oh, now I feel silly. <laughs> <laughs> were, you, were you changing your avatar on roll twenty in the hopes they would show up? <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, I was trying to. I was trying to look at all the options and see. I was like, can I can I have the avatar show up aside from my profile pictures? And it didn't. I wish I, I wish I was that good at programming to make that happen because that would be fucking awesome. But, but no, you need to give me a photo if you want to change that. Oh, <laughs> uh, bless your other. Shut up. <laughs> Anyhow, I'm sorry. What was what was the original topic? <laughs> We were talking about, um... Grieve said that he would offer his stuff uh, in value for this weapon if Goose finds it. Oh, okay. Um, unfortunately, the concierge is unwilling to move on it, saying that if this item that you're talking about is really so valuable, then it has to be processed through the High Tower Company first. Alright. Uh, that, that's fair, on one condition. It's not tampered with, and we get to keep it at the end whenever you look at it. Uh, Merchant, roll a... Roll a perception check. Oh, the perception, good. Hmm. Uh, you notice that a few individuals in the room are... trying to hide it, but they're clearly eavesdropping on this conversation. Uh, with that in mind, he would look to the... Uh... I can't remember. Did we even get a name of the character? I don't think we did, did we? Uh, you have not. Um, uh, I, I look at him and he's like, could we take this matter privately? As we're effectively standing in line with people behind us. <laughs> yes, <laughs> trying to make a really good deal. Uh, but the, like, the, people in, the people behind you are not as subtle. <laughs> as you kind of like turn your shoulder, they kind of like look up at the ceiling, whistling. Huh? I'm sorry? Yeah. Are you, what do, you, do you want something? <laughs> Grief places it, the palm of his hand on the uh, handle of his rapier, just kind of a, as a warning, if I suppose. You, if you like those ears, you should not listen, or they'll be off. But yeah, uh, back to the thingy. Can we move this matter privately, right. if you don't mind? Quick the wrong and say how many seems. I'm afraid I'm quite tied to my desk. Then can we speak to someone else about it privately? No. <laughs> You're not very good at business, are you? You see I don't have to be, because we're the only business here. Well. Wow, it seems like <laughs> everybody's just sort of, you know, quite quick to posturing. I don't I have a business venture in mind. Why don't we set up a small little camp here and then try to make a business out of it? I mean... I would advise against that. Yes, but I don't have to listen to you, do I? Anyhow, back to business. These contracts are only affected by us, right? Yes, quite. All right, then. Then I suggest we sign and just get over with it. 
Now, if we don't sign, will you prevent us from entering the dungeon? The can't prevent us. Unfortunately, yes we can. The entrance to the dungeon is heavily monitored by high tower mercenary security. And you will not make it past the gates without a signed contract. You're welcome to try, but I'm sure as you head over there, you'll see for yourself the many attempts. Oh, you see? Now everybody's like super mad about this play and suspicious, aren't they? I was going to say, can we send people individually with the Black Book? Like, Adam doesn't have to go with them. Uh, correct. Alright, I have an idea, though. So, yeah, uh... I guess there isn't much more to discuss with that, so it's like... Well, if that's the case, I guess we don't really have a choice. Very good. Also, you'll need to sign your real names. We've had some adventurers come in with aliases, and it doesn't help us find them. Well, we're part uh, of the well, books. You can find I'm us. I'm not doing that. That's not how the contract works. You need to sign your real names. No. Nope. And I'm aware <laughs> of... Black Book's reputation for having cutesy nicknames. Well, it's not a matter of nicknames, as you say. We entirely forego who we were. Choose the names to represent who we are. These are our names. What they were before is not who we are now. But as I'm trying to get you to understand they aren't helpful, say if a member of your organization was nicknamed John, how many Johns in the multiverse are there? There is only one John of the Black Book. And The magic gets awfully fuzzy if you're not as specific. Then you need that better is. magic. Cool. Get him. These are <laughs> our names. <laughs> we would ask that you respect how we wish to be named. The individual starts to look... He starts to form a frown. One that doesn't seem particularly inviting. I'm sorry, then. That is how the High Tower Company operates. We need your real names as a function of our business. If you wish to interact with our business and enter into the ruins, you must comply with our protocols. I would wish to do so, if you were to understand that these are our real names. I'm sure you have reasons for your aliases. They are not I am aliases. saying to you that the magic in this contract requires you to write your actual names. In the, event, you... in the event that, say... Your entire party here were to fall. We would need some method to secure our losses. Send runners in send runners in after you to try and recover the bodies. Is there any way we could make an arcana check or an insight check to see there, if there's any real truth to what this guy is yammering on about? Because he seems really insistent on this. Oh, sure. I was going to say the contracts, I presume. Uh, well, if you want to roll Arcana to sort of verify that information, you can. Insight to see if he's trying to play it to a different angle. Um, could I do both, possibly? One and then the other? 
Uh, sure. All right. Uh, could I do the insight check with somebody's help? Who else has a high charisma here or high insight? Uh, is wisdom. Yeah. That's right. My insight mm -hmm. is plus five. So don't, that would... Don't worry, don't worry about the mechanics. Just worry don't about the mechanics. Okay. Yeah, just, just roll it. Get my sheet up real quick. Roll it. You didn't have it up already? Go! <laughs> Shut your mouth. Amateur. <laughs> with this back and forth with the clerk, Amanda just sighs heavily, a look of frustration on his face. Like, trying to explain something to a two-year-old and they're just not getting it. <laughs> okay, so I heavily fail the insight check. Yeah, but you can roll Arcana. Alright. Just, yeah. just to verify that a contract this might have as much power as he decrees. Okay. So, um... Does anyone want to assist, assist that roll? Uh, I've only got three. It's not a main one, so... Mm. Plus, I'm not sure. figure that stuff. Yeah, I'm bad. Uh, Amanada knows nothing about arcane magics, but he'll roll anyway. But he did, he did pretty good, to be honest. And that's why oh, you always roll, you... not worrying about what your bonus is. Can you, can you <laughs> roll untrained? Yes, this is not Pathfinder. Are we all? Are we all? There's no just... such thing as untrained in 5e. Yeah, but I thought you couldn't roll the knowledge rolls unless you had proficiency. That's old editions. Oh, is it? Okay. Alright. Uh... So with the 19 Arcana, what he's saying seems to be at least uh, magically accurate. Uh, you kind of get the sense that this contract he's trying to have you sign uh, relies upon the power of true names. You know, what I suggest, friends, comrades, companions, that the man doesn't quite care what we choose for our names. He just, uh, and, you know, doesn't quite care for our reasons, I suppose. He just wants to make sure he gets his money back. Am I right, sir? You speak of me as being shrewd. I, mean, I am simply working within the High Tower Company's interests. Well, they would um, be shrewd then. But with the 13 insight, Amanita, let me just roll something real quick. Uh, you get the sense that there is. There, there is something to having you sign your real names on the contract that he seems to be angling for. Aside from, as he puts it, recovering his losses. He is certain in that he knows what he thinks he knows, but he is missing the point. I see no reason to waste this chap's time. I'm going to sign my real name. Uh, and then I sign a false name. Okay. Uh, as you try to sign a false name, I need you to make a charisma saving throw. Okay. <laughs> Um, watch that fail. So, unfortunately, as you try to actually draw letters upon the page, uh, you're unable to move your pen. And you mm -hmm. find that there seems to be s some compulsion trying to force you into signing your actual name but you're able to steal through it but still can't sign a false name right okay i dare say your pen doesn't work 
Oh, it works quite well. But it doesn't respond well to trickery. Do I look like a trickster to you? Well, you're not the first Kenku I've seen. They all seem to have a... a way about them. Well... That's not racist at all. I would advise you write your real name. My laws. You know, your lead is always the one to lead the way. Right, and walks out of the store. I shrug with that, I guess. Merchant will follow. I missed the uh, rapid yeah. fire. Did you say <laughs> out the door? Yep. yep. Gladly. Concierge shakes his head. I'm so sorry we couldn't reach an arrangement. And I am sorry that you failed to understand. Uh, since we get outside, I'm um, going to pitch it to the rest of the crew. There was the... Uh, the, the, the chap who wanted the, the drugs, who said there was a back way in. It might at least... Oh, it's a long shot, but it might be something. Yeah, let's go look up this drug fella. And then maybe <laughs> if you don't want to spend the money, we could, um... There's unsavory methods. Uh, Mr. GM, has mm -hmm. there been much in the way of animal life? Rats, birds, critters? Uh... Oddly enough, as you've spent time here... Uh, you have not seen any signs of birds or animal life about the streets, um, even for a ruined city. Um, suddenly strikes home and realizing this. Ah, I understand why I've been uncomfortable here. There's something wrong with this place. Do you suppose it might be that a, a company owns the whole place and probably is, you know, just really, really interested in keeping its secrets entirely to themselves? Do we not do the same? Yeah, no. but we do it for our buildings. Do we? And, you know, our secret names and stuff. We don't do it with other people going in and then taking their dead bodies out to dungeons that we make them pay for, I guess? Sounds like a scam. I was thinking more of the lack of any rodents and wildlife. That too. I mean, they could be killing them. That sounds like a really tedious... Of them. Sounds like a really tedious task to murder every the last Couldn't pest they... or verb about, don't you think? Do a magic... I mean, it's a small island thingy, right? They could do, like, a spell. Well, can couple. we detect any sort of spell? Mm. Find a corner and spend ten minutes to cast the tech magic. Okay. Is there any just general aura going on? Um... As, as you take a moment to sort of concentrate and feel the aura of the place, um, you begin to feel a, like a, a weight pushing down on your shoulders. You don't sense magic, but there is a presence here. Something that seems to... Uh, disturb your more uh, naturalistic ties. Um, you can definitely feel it coming from the direction of the ruins. There is something here 
faint, like cobwebs against the face, is disturbing, unnatural. I expect it is sourced in the ruins. Let's go find that drug addict then. Yes. I feel we have greater motivation to enter these ruins now. Yeah, because, you know, Ted's in there. A monitor, do you have um, any hallucinogenic something along those lines? His eyes light up bright, uh, briefly, <laughs> like just slightly, as he look, turns his head to you uh, a little faster than he usually moves. <laughs> ah, are you developing an interest? I have quite a few things, if you like. Well, this this fellow that we met in the tavern before, he wanted drugs in exchange for information about a back way into the ruins. Perhaps something simple, then. Uh, some Kafka nuts, perhaps. Okay. I guess we'd be off to try and find that guy. Okay. Um, it only takes about maybe an hour of investigating around before you come across him. Um, he's 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 sort of stayed in the same area. He's just been skulking around, it seems, as you find him uh, loitering in just some alleyway. Um, it seems seated on a barrel and is just sort of like scratching himself. Ah, <laughs> oh, my friend. Um, huh. I remember you talking last night about a uh, making sure no one's around listening into this. Um. I remember you talking about a alternative path into the ruins. He sort of has has a blank look for a moment before he goes. Oh yeah, yeah, I know of a way in. Do you care to share this information? If I were to tell you that I have brought my dealer, <laughs> <laughs> a dealer here. Right here, we can give you a, a small, a small sample of what we have on offer. You can share some information. Oh, sure, sure. Let me uh wait. This isn't a trick. Let me uh let me let me see what you got. Pass the floor over to my monitor. You share an interest in herbalism, I see. I believe you will find these quite interesting. Though a word of caution, their effects are quite potent. I suggest starting small, just a single nut from the Kafka tree. He looks and down he at pull, the nuts. Pulls a pulls out his pouch and rolls a single, uh, it, like it looks like an almond, in shape and it's like that pitted, but it's like a bright red. He kind of squints his eyes. It's not flay leaf. leaf. Let me see. Kind of plucks it from your hand. Kind of brings it up to his uh. Nose trying to sniffs at it. I expect this Loki, is something. Loki, if you take all of it, it'd be interesting to. Watch. I believe this is something different. It is known as the Kafka nut. Its effects energize and heighten your sensations and awareness. A burst of energy. The word of caution. 
you will be easily, more easily harmed. Bruises are common. Grief kind of rubs his back where the where he was slapped. <laughs> He, uh, he eats it straight in. That's okay. I like drugs. Chews it. Swallows. <laughs> Takes about a minute. He's just kind of looking down at himself. How long do I have to wait before it? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> His pupils begin to dilate. <laughs> <laughs> Turns into Start. like <laughs> he he just he's just looking down at his hands, he's just turning them over and over again and again. <laughs> Wait, oh. he, t- he told us where to go, around <laughs> Nope. <laughs> I guess okay. I'm not the show is then. I suppose we're going to be here until his trip is over. Oh, Good God! Oh, this is good. I like this. Show, show us the secret way, please. That would be helpful. Of course, of course. Uh, you got any more? Yeah, tons, lots of it. Okay, I'll show you. You gotta follow me, though. You gotta lay low. No. <laughs> Start, starts making all these sort of like. Weird motions and jitters. <laughs> Brief With that kind of, of follows them. in normal fashion, but it pulls out uh, some mistletoe and a sprig of spruce and starts muttering under his breath. <laughs> All right, let's go, boys. Lo, as he says. Would you like us to make stealth checks? Uh, sure. Twenty. We all got a plus ten bonus. We all got a plus ten bonus to Dex. Jeez. The the stealth, yeah. For, for stealth, at least. Okay. So, uh, I think we're just missing. Yeah, we're just missing grief. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Oh. Ooh. I mean, I've got 33. I'm basically invisible right now. <laughs> uh, so the way he takes you um, is, is sort of roundabout. You quickly find yourselves entering uh, dirtier streets. Uh, you start seeing more folks in uh, tattered robes. Um you kind of get the feeling that some of these people may have been adventurers, but were unable to leave. But he he kind of keeps <laughs> steering you through. <laughs> what the fuck are you rolling? Little <laughs> um, funny math is weird. It's very picky about the direction of the backslash. Anyway, sorry. Anyways. Uh, you, you find yourselves approaching the western side of the Crucible. Oh, wrong layer. Of course. So right around here. Um, now again, the Crucible is like basically like a giant stone wall, like a smooth stone wall built around uh, the collapsed ruins of the Academy. Um... But he he takes you over to what looks like a to a fissure in the wall, um, seeming to pause before uh, going across the street as uh, a mercenary guard slowly patrols on by. Ah, clever! As you have slipped through the cracks of society, so shall we through this barrier. You really think it's simple as? Uh... Crack in the wall. Oh no no no! This is just to get in. The uh, bastards over there—they charge. 
much too high a price. You gotta pay like 250 gold just to get in, in most cases. And even then, they take a good portion of what you get back. We're well aware. Yeah. This wall, he kind of gives it some smacks. It's like turbocharged with like magic protective runes. Prevents people from getting inside. But he kind of... Um, when I say fissure, it's sort of... Uh, you can see it kind of spread down from the top of this large giant stone wall even. And sort of fork into like a triangle wedge at the bottom. Um, but the uh, the individual he sort of kind of gives some taps uh, with his with his hand along the edges, um, and at one point it kind of gives like a crack and uh, budges out. Um, and he kind of slow he he begins to kind of budget, hefting it over to kind of reveal again a small. Um, a small hole into the ruins. Um, unfortunately, you guys will have to crawl on your hands and knees because it's not quite as large as he might have advertised. Uh, it gets us in. It gets us in. Let's spawn. Let's crawl. It seems that we all must stick our arms through the hole. What if I squat? Could I do it? Uh, even you would have to get on your hands and knees. Dang. Can I, uh, would I be able to send Worm Death through fast? Uh, you could. He's uh, He is a small creature. Just to see it's like not a trap or something. Order weird. him to be quiet. Okay. Tell him to uh, slide on through. Quietly. Okay. Quietly. okay. Uh, worm Dirt appears, and he begins oh. to he wiggle bigger? himself into the crack. He is bigger. He's been bigger for a while. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. You forget, you forget things like that. He's still not that big. Uh, how He's far do you want Worm Dirt to go? Uh, to like the other side. Okay. Um, yeah, then after a few minutes uh, you get a telep telepathic message saying that he's breached or uh, he's in. Uh, and what does he see? Uh, he sees a whole lot of rubble. Okay, well, let's tell the others. It seems clear he's through. Alright then. I, I will nominate know. myself to go last. I will go first. Because I'm the stealthiest. <laughs> uh, I'll go somewhere in the middle. Stuck in the, in the middle of you. And the man of the walls shapeshift down into a mongoose, so he doesn't have to crawl. <laughs> Everyone's trying to avoid crawling. You guys are such pansies. I wiggle but like a wind. My legend doesn't care. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but as you all enter and uh, squeeze your way through this crevice, um, your helpful friend seals up the entrance behind you. What a cool guy. In the end, druggies really are the best people in the world. <laughs> <laughs> what a weird thing no. to say. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's like a wholesome, what do you call it, Hallmark movie? Day. The bum that blew my mind. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, it only takes a minute of crawling before the same crevice opens back up. Who's who's at the back? Damn it! God, <laughs> Goose. <laughs> what I do? Goose. Uh, you can you you sort of have to like bend your head down and look between your own legs to see. Um, but you see light filtering in from that same entrance. Uh, and you hear your friend's voice uh, talking to someone else. Yeah, yeah, they broke the rules. They went in there. Can I have my money? Fucking guy. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, Adam. What was that? Becky's <laughs> really all the wisp people in the wid. 
uh, sort of hurried, hurriedly crawling through the. Yeah, you see, you see the face of a mercenary guard sort of peering in. Um, he seems to kind of produce something from his pocket that casts an illuminating light, uh, and his eyes go wide. He sort of catches your tail feathers. You know what? We're killing all these people. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is too much at this point. We're killing everybody that comes after us. And if necessary, I'm killing this whole company. Hold on. Can I maybe, well, we we can just get in. Is a bunch of tail feathers right now. Could I maybe <laughs> cast darkness? That's weird. Um, and make it to where he can't see us at all unless it's magical. Darkness? It's magical. Um, hold on. Let me check that spell. That's correct. Uh, I think dark, magical, magical darkness. darkness. The 15 foot radius sphere, but he, he could see blocks through it. sight, even dark vision, yes. For only he knows there's just a big pigeon stuck in a. I think door. light beats it, though. If it's a light yeah. spell, I, I'm pretty sure that magical light counts as out magical darkness. If you want, if you want to cast darkness, uh, you may do so, but you would have to roll uh, a concentration check. Because um, the the tightness of the crevice, with your shoulders constantly budging against the stone, combined with the fact that you would have to like see past uh, was it Goose and whoever else is behind you in order to like get a proper distance on the spell. Right. So w- wait, what's a concentration check? I don't see that anywhere. It's a 1d20 plus your casting modifier uh, plus your proficiency. What? Alright. Is so that right? Sorry, it's... No. No. No? <laughs> Pathfinder. Oh, <laughs> damn it. It's con- con- constitution. It's just a con. It's just a con- I don't know why I've been thinking in Pathfinder these past couple of sessions. <laughs> a con save, excuse me, not check. Well, it's a good thing I've got a plus zero in con. <laughs> con saving throw. So it's, a, it's, a, it's a saving throw, right? Yeah, yeah con, con saving save. throw. Yeah, you just need a 10 or better. Magical light can see through darkness. Yes, I was saying that it blocks dark vision in normal light. Right, but not the cantrip light. Cantrip Correct. light can't do it. It does not stop magical light. That's that's charisma, not con. Oh, f- Constitution. Stop. You'll get there eventually, don't worry. It's the other side. <laughs> How did I miss that? <laughs> Are you okay, Azra? Are you okay? <laughs> I'm a little no, tired, sure. honestly. <laughs> oh, jeez. Hey. Oh, hey. No, 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 no. It's the, the check is only a DC 10. You're fine. So... <laughs> I'm so close to losing. <laughs> or winning. So j- just as the light uh, begins to sort of like shine through, uh, grief in you and your... Uh, without a moment's hesitation you just cast a spell uh, managing through the inconveniences around you as a goose this, about half your body is submerged in just a sudden sphere of darkness that fills up the space um, and as, as the uh, mercenary guard is sort of peering in sort of waving this like light stone around he kind of squints his eyes like I don't see anything. It's just dark. God damn it. <laughs> you kind of hear the voice of the, the druggie going, Ah! Don't hit me! I told you, they went in there! Guy just can't believe it. Just goes trouncing off. It seems you have eluded detection. Very good, Grief. Now crawl faster, everyone. Right. <laughs> yeah. It takes you about... Use Wham style. It takes you about 20 yeah. minutes worth of crawling before you actually pop out on the other side. Um, I imagine the whole room is dark. Uh, it's actually... You, you do get some little rays of light peeking through the wreckage above. Uh, but this does seem to be like a collapsed portion of the ru- ruin that is sort of closed off on its own. So, um, the fire beetle that is hanging out with you guys gives off about 10 foot of light radius when he wants to. Okay. So. 
can I pick you up and like move you around like a torch? I mean, I'm the size of a small gnome, but yes. Oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> Sorry, when you, said, when you said beetle, I just presumed small. Giant fire beetle. beetle. I didn't put you sure. on his head. All right. So Grief kind of looks around at the rest of the party with his hands behind his back, you know, just, just how he normally stands. He's like, okay, I hope you all realize that once we get out of here, I'm going to slice that bum's fingers off. Oh, well, by all means. We're not going out that way, because, you know, you're probably going to post God's day. We're looking if we can probably teleport out thanks to the book. It's rock. You guys could hold on just a minute for me here. Are you... Where are you going? I'm not. I need to cast something. Oh, okay. <laughs> it takes a while. It takes a minute. Alright. I, I presume an earth elemental? Uh, yeah, we'll go for earth. Okay. Uh... Then from the ground, so you, the the space that you guys are in is roughly about twenty feet wide, um, and about fifteen feet in breadth. So you're you're able to squeeze in, but it's it's really sort of like elbow room. Uh, and as you sort of conjure this elemental, uh, four begins to warp and shift as a shape starts to emerge, only vaguely humanoid, but it's got. Two arms, two legs, and two glowing eyes. And the stumpy lump of a head. And it's totally friendly for an hour. It can it be used to walk into traps for us. As long as you don't get smacked on this constitution. Oh, that's my bodyguard, so I'll be fine. Ah. <laughs> uh, I guess we'll proceed into this the ruins then. Uh, we caution, because we know they're traps. I can use my Thieves tool to disarm traps, right? Uh, yes. Uh, depending if it's a trap that can be disarmed. Yes. But I won't want everyone to be very well aware of this. <laughs> uh, yes, I should probably get the stab lock ready. <laughs> that is the the automatic casting requirement material component for any summoning spell is to have the stat block in hand. Got it. Well, so was it um was it dark in here like super dark? Uh, in the in the space that you're in, it's dim light. You said it's light coming from above because I presume it's light. Roof has been broken. Right. So you can probably presume that you are inside the the stone wall, the crucible, um, somewhere where pieces of the the academy have sort of created this very small bubble of space. I miss my dark vision. <laughs> Okay, I think we all have dark vision, mostly. <laughs> I used to have it. Yeah, you ain't got it now. In any case, we all we all have some measure of visibility. I will stick stick close to the giant beetle because he will light up things. Well, boys, I suggest we start looking for some stairs because this level is supposed to be cleared out, right? So we've got to find a way down, of course. Well, up. Up? Yeah, it's a it's a tower, like like at a up. university thing. Well, y yeah, but maybe they have a basement. But but the floors were like going up. I thought. We'll, we'll find out eventually. I mean, it was like it was floating in the sky, if you remember. Well, this is true. And then it crashed. But then, again, we are dealing with mages. We don't really... Well, I guess if it crashed, and there wouldn't really be a basement left. <laughs> this is the basement. We are then. Now. <laughs> and we have to get to the first floor, relatively speaking. 
Because the right. basement is full of the garbage that nobody wants. And it's likely where most of our competition is going to start. Right. And you know what? Wizards keep all the best shit at the top. That's how wizards work. That's how they think. Even Goose. He wanted a big tower, didn't you, Goose? I would have kept it in all the good stuff in the basement. Well, I mean, don't just make up stories now that you're hearing me Well, say considering the first floor has been mapped out, I don't think we're going to find much down here. Exactly. You catch my mean in there, don't you, mention? I do. Besides, we need to look for Ted, so we need to get moving. That's right. So, oh, uh, perhaps I wasn't I'm, clear. Uh, you guys are in like a closed-off cavern. Like oh, the crevice, wait. the crevice you entered into enters into this just room. So the problem becomes how you intend to pass through all this stone in your way. Hmm. I mean, I could use ethereal step to walk through the wall, but that doesn't help anybody else but me. We search for passages. Oh, it punches it. Okay. The, the, the beetle just starts nosing around the the base of the walls that we find ourselves in. Arden doesn't really do that. He actually takes a look around to look for the uh, doorway. As, as, you, as you try and punch it, a little pebble from the ceiling falls down onto your head. Massive damage! Oh, that was humiliating. Anyways, do I see like a door shape or something? Uh, no, you just see piles of presumably former academy wall just lumped around you. So, does this imply that we will have we'll have to break our way through or move the rubble ourselves? Right. I'm guessing yes. So you guys, you guys aren't actually in. Do you guys aren't actually in the ruins proper. You're sort of like in the space between the pru the crucible and the actual ruins. The pushable. We're, we're, we're in the wall. In the wall between sections. Right. Uh. Amanda will attempt to rise himself up on his back legs and use his mandibles and forelegs to kind of point in the at the ceiling. I don't know <laughs> if he'll up. be able to get that communication across any. You want me to get the golem to punch the ceiling open? Wouldn't we just end up on top of the wall? I didn't Amanda, speak back. Amanda the beagle, beagle, beetle, beetle, <laughs> beetle, trying to climb the wall. Well, I mean, isn't is this the out, is this the outside portion of the wall still, or like we're inside the wall? Yeah. Right, but the top, if it's all, if it's like a castle wall, like you know how that sort of sticks out into the air. Let me. Uh, perhaps I can just diagram it a bit so like um we we ain't too bright you need to help us <laughs> all right so uh, he's black. feeling his inability to communicate the beetle transforms back into a gith zorai and he mentions debris fell from above perhaps there is some passage there oh well we can see light coming out from above right so yeah <laughs> yeah i mean we know this like sun, I presume that's the sun. Uh, my friends, I foresee many things, and one thing I foresee right now is us breaking the roof and a load of rubble falling on us. That's what I was thinking. Oh. But if we can see light coming through, can we determine how thick the rubble is above us really is? Well, because if it's just going to be some, a... some holes already where the light's coming through, so we just need to figure out how to get up there. Which I can just start climbing the wall because I have the cloak. Do we um, want to so get I, on top I, of that I, wall there? Wouldn't we just be outside? We want to be inside. I presume if we think it would be... Let me just get the pointer. We're here. I presume we're here, and if we get out we here, it's up. the ruin, so we can find our way in. Right, but like, the entrance is here, sort of, this level, I thought. Uh, yeah, so let me just draw... Like, the entrance goes through the wall. Yeah. Yeah, so you guys are on the inside of the wall. You're just in a 
a collapsed space that isn't completely filled. So All if we right, go to we, we'd we be in the open, see. and then we have to break down this wall. Well, we get in, and then if the building's over here, there's going to be a way in, like a broken Our window or somehow. Be here? Like the, the company? I Can presume we not. This whole... I thought, well, wouldn't they put people monitoring this? Or magic well, or such? Actually, well, wouldn't I, that make sense? I just climb, out, climb up there and poke my head through one of these gaps and see what's up there. Well, you could do that. If there's a All grab right. big enough to your head, of course. Okay. It's worth a shot. So with the uh, the cloak of Arachne. Also, I don't know what called. kind of minutes they have protecting this place. The shrug. What was that? Arden doesn't know what kind of magics are protecting the walls. Like, it is his magic academy, and these guys do really seem interested in keeping people out. <laughs> uh, oh. Alright, so... Unless you paid them. As you begin to sort of uh, let your cape climb up the wall and bring you along... I I'll do um, this carefully, by the way. Of course, yeah. Um, near nearing one of these, like, uh spaces where light seems to be filtering through. Uh, you can put your face up close to it and see that uh, the ceiling seems to go for about another 10 feet of collapsed rubble before you can kind of see a, a bit of blue sky on the other side. So it's quite a thick hole I'm looking through. Right, so you got, you got 10 feet of ceiling. So if you broke that 10 feet of ceiling it would fall on us? Yes, but we have a elemental guy control like rock in some way. It can go through it. <laughs> so the end will elemental a bit. It also has a fairly significant strength score too. It do. If you hold so me above you, I could catch some of it. <laughs> It, it, it doesn't matter if a load of rocks fall on the elemental or such. I want y'all to know yes. that we're very much tempting fate with the potential of rocks fall, you all die. <laughs> True as a all right, then. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean... <laughs> ten, feet, ten feet of rock sounds like a bad time. Uh, so we're placing, placing all our bets here on the ceiling. Um, Why don't we just go through the wall? Yeah, that's what I mean. Can't you just get that guy to lock dig? He's uh, he, he he can go like straight through a wall, so uh, I guess I'll send him through a wall. Yeah, can't he can't he lock like go halfway and then just push it apart or something? I don't know. Just know he can that tunnel us They do not affect their surroundings when they travel. I see. Yeah, so I guess that's the plan, is send the elemental through the wall. See what happens. Uh, in the direction that we, opposite the one we, the way we came. Right. So so keeping on level. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any further commands other than that? Um, Observe I can't. and report back. I'm not sure if I can communicate with it. Mm. It's got a minus three on int. Okay, I'll send it through, bring it back, and then uh, try with telepathy to get something out of it. What's on the other side? Okay. Uh... Do you speak Terran? Uh, with telepathy, I don't need to speak any language. It's like a universal language. Right, okay. Um, okay, then as you sort of send it through, uh, a few minutes pass, uh, and then it comes back. Uh, it tells you 
telepathically that it see it saw a dark hallway. Um, just a bit of clarification, like an open hallway, not blocked or anything. Uh, as as far as it went, the hallway continued to go on. Okay, uh, relaying to the other guys. Uh, Pass uh, also through this wall. There is a hallway. How thick is the wall? I will ask the elemental how thick the wall was. Uh, it responds, thick. Uh, thick. <laughs> Alright, I'm back. In five feet increments. Uh, uh, it asks, what's five feet? <laughs> 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 Elementals always have to be difficult, don't they? Okay, um, I will instruct it to walk at a steady pace back through the wall, and we will count the seconds before it comes back. <laughs> okay. Um, so, the complete round trip takes it uh, 18 seconds. So you can deduce that it is a thick wall. You know, guys. Perhaps there might be. Is it Kevin stretch out, or is it just a single Kevin? Just a single cavern. Yeah, this sucks. <laughs> uh, well, I get the feeling the way up is uh, would be easier to sort of punch through. Right, but that's more hazardous to our health. Yep. I'm surprised you care about that. Um... Okay, well... <laughs> to yours? I mean, I don't want you dying. No, but Reckless is your middle name. I presume. Right, but... If we're trying to do this... To find Ted and just escape without paying anybody... You know, I mean... I believe I may be able to surpass the difficulty of the wall, but it will leave me quite drained. Um, I could assist you however you need with the elemental. I presume this is... you have a mold rock or something like that, don't you? So, a monitor will approach the wall and start muttering a few words under his breath and he starts running his hands along it like he's molding clay and the stone uh, shifts like it was clay and he just kind of like works out a, a, a narrow but passable passage through the stone uh, of five feet. Welcome back, Nate. All right. Thank you. And uh, how much stone can you sculpt? Five feet. <laughs> okay. Uh, so you get an entrance five feet in. Uh, and that's as far as you get. Yep. I'll cast it one more time. Do the same. Okay. Wait, do we know how? Okay. And before trying to get, if it doesn't get through, he will not cast it a third time, but he'll instead ask for uh, assistance with the earth elemental to. Punch his way through. Get an idea how much more there is to go. Um, using the elemental as sort of like a depth gauge, uh, we'll say there seems to be about twenty feet left of stone. God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, geez. that was wasted effort. But you do have a nice like indent into the rough into the rubble to work with. This is the wall, right? Not the ceiling. This is the no, wall. Okay. Yeah. 
So I just have the element of stuck going to town on this thing. Okay. Um, He's closing his eyes briefly, looking exhausted already. I can continue, but I'll have nothing left. Rest now, yeah. friend. Let's see how far I get through. So the elemental just starts pounding into the wall. Mm -hmm. um, a few more pebbles and pieces of rock fall from the ceiling above. Um, uh, the elemental is about to get another 10 feet in before there's a, there's a large sound from the canopy of debris above you. Uh, uh, I need, I need uh, everyone to roll a dexterity saving throw. In the tunnel? Uh, yeah, even in the tunnel. But the, the, the DC is just going to be 10. Oh, fuck, I look at that, didn't I? Oh, you can still crit fail a save. Wow. R rolls are low tonight. <laughs> so uh, Arden they failed. They low, but they are high enough, and that's what matters. <laughs> that's true. We gotta look at the positives. Except for Merchant. He's screwed. Okay. So... Unfortunately, I think 5e net ones are auto fails on saves, right? Saving throws can still crit, yes. Okay. Skill checks that don't. Yeah, that's so a, unfortunately... That's really up to you. I've never met a GM who didn't house rule that in some way or form. Uh, in, in this instance, just because you guys are in a cramped space, um, and the large elemental, even though there is some bit of a tunnel... He does take up half of it in this instance. But, uh... Yeah, so Ardent and Merchant, you take 14 bludgeoning damage. Ow. It's just large pieces of rock just smack into you. They gave me a hit. Um, half or none? Uh, none. Cool. Yeah, it's essentially just stepping out of the way and avoiding... Uh, damage from these falling rocks. I'm okay, guys. I still have three digits. <laughs> Looking for some. But uh, one more round of punching from the elemental, and there's a, a sound of breaching. Um, unfortunately, the opening does cause another seismic rumble uh, from the ceiling above, and I'll need one more round of dexterity saving throws. <laughs> Jesus! What, what the fuck?! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, just three natural ones there, like jeez. I know it's absolutely. That's the disadvantage. Yeah. Advantage. I know, but still, <laughs> I don't want to okay. see the red. So, goose, you will take eight bludgeoning damage. I'm assuming we hear a squawk as it hits them on the head. <laughs> Fortunately, the ceiling does not collapse. Um, but it certainly has been tempered into doing so. Uh, the fortunate bit, though, is that you now all have a tunnel leading into uh, a finely etched stone hallway. We did it, boys. We're not going to starve in some hole. Good going, guys. The gold is ours. I say we keep our voices down and lest we attract the attention of our uh, competition. <laughs> oh, I thought that was somebody's... Ringtone? Yeah. I don't know what ringtone is. Well, our entrance may have been quite... loud. We should not proceed in the same manner. Must be as loud as possible. Let's no, stay I'm just joking, boys. Let's stay. <laughs> well, I think I think quiet. the first thing we should do is actually look around our surroundings and see what we see. Well, it's yeah, a stone I mean, hallway falling like itched. Yeah, uh, the so hallway goes we... left and right. 
Left and there you right. Go. Okay. We never got a map, did we? Nope. Is it like infinite hallway left and right? Uh, no. Both seem to stop and sort of curve around. Um, the hallway itself probably has a width of about... Let's see. Uh... And, uh, while you're figuring that out, I would like to cast Locate Creature for Mr. Ted. All right, and that's within a thousand feet. Correct. While Amanita's doing that, Goose is gonna touch that weapon again. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll need that saving throw. Just trying to get a location on the other one. All right, you managed to save. <laughs> so, uh, starting with locate creature, uh, you kind of take a moment now that you've entered it into the ruins proper uh, to send your mind out and try and find uh, the being known as Ted. Uh, and you come back with a positive response. Ping. Um, okay, the exact here. direction doesn't matter for narrative, but Amana will point out where he is feeling that coming from, and hopefully that will guide our steps. Uh, the spell stays up for an hour, so I'll be consulting it uh, as we move. Okay, you will be our tour guide through the ruins, basically. <laughs> Uh, you get you get a presence that Ted is above you, at least in height. Um, you get you get you get sort of a vague feeling uh, that he is up and forwards, maybe a little to the left. Uh, Gooses, as you kind of reach into your bag of holding and uh, grab hold of your. Uh, tool. <laughs> Whoa! <Pricing. laughs> First he's touching his weapon, now he's grabbing his tool. Come on. <laughs> um, you are able to detect a... Well, or the, the weapon informs you of a presence in roughly the same direction. Oh, that all aligns quite well. <laughs> it's all about how you use it. Guess oh, mine has more. Mine has more eyes. <laughs> now let's see how you handle it. <laughs> Jeez. Um, it would seem that Ted stands above. And to the side. And Grace suggests handled. that direction as he points down the hallway that most closely aligns. <laughs> points leftwards. All right, let's get it. Okay. Right. So, um, uh, again, uh, we want to keep out uh, the traps. So, Merchant will be very on top of that if he can. I'm probably going to want to make a perception check, but as we go, Grace. Kind of, he has a question. He kind of asks the group, you know, this Ted fellow, he's a lawyer. Um, if he's a lawyer, then how do you suppose he got through all the danger and all the traps to make it to a higher floor all by his lonesome? He was well, with. He's not alone. He's not alone, but that, that's the point. A sure, lawyer he is aptly equipped to negotiate a guide. This is true, but we need to maybe worry about who he's with. As are we. Yeah. It's the Tentos. Very well, I suppose we move forward from here. 
I'm not wrong, am I? He's with ten toes. I seem to remember that. All right. So, heading down the leftward passage, you come across a door. Adventurer's worst uh, enemy. <laughs> What does the door look like? Um, it, does it look like it's trapped? Does it have a key? Uh, it has a keyhole, but it, it looks fairly aged. Like the wood has um, looks fairly what? Aged. Like the wood. Yeah. The wood has expanded to fit the frame. I sniff it. Does it look like the door from the tavern in Mergrimor? Uh, it does not. It's does, this, does the door smell like blood? No, but it faintly smells like smoke. You it know, smells like where smoke smoke. the door. There's smoke. There's fire. Does uh, it have a giant demon head with a gaping mouth of darkness inside? Uh, not this door. <laughs> I try to open the door. Uh, it's stuck. Well, the door's stuck. Door's stuck. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we go back. Uh, the door is stuck. Um, can can we try picking it? Is there a? No, I mean like it's. It's, you know, stuck in the frame. Is I mean, I can break it down, but it'd make a lot of noise. Is it a pull door? Are you pushing? I push and pull. Uh, doesn't seem to give in either direction. Yeah, it's not working. I don't think it's locked. I think the door is, you know, warped and it's gotten stuck in the frame. Perhaps we can there was... force the door open, but without... Right, well, my concern is that you want to be quiet, Locke. Applying pressure does not necessarily mean running into it with your shoulder. Well, there's a very variety of other things that could happen. I mean, it could be... It could fall apart when we open it, or... It could squeak really loudly or something. I don't know. Do you have like a silence in spell or something? I am silence a cleric. No. Well, I didn't know clerics did that. Only, only a follower of faith would have spells to silence other people's voice. It seems pretty dumb to me. All right. Um. I could just... You know, I could open it. Or we could just look elsewhere. Can I uh, ascertain if it's locked by a magical means? Like detect magic? Uh, or are you just locked looking? or stuck? Uh, it's stuck. Uh, yeah, okay. You know, just, yeah. by, just by way of sort of touch and... Yeah, you you would probably have to break through this door, or find some other way through it. All right, yeah. My monitor will lend his strong arm to. Uh, are we break? Are we doing attempt. this? I okay. mean, we could go back. Uh, it'll be athletics. All right, I guess we're doing it. Don't say I didn't attempt. Okay. Uh, it squeaks, but it's not enough. Uh, <laughs> funnily enough, Ardent, your weakest attempt is enough to budge the door open. <laughs> well, I did it. DC 10. <laughs> Door's open. So, so, <laughs> uh, managed to pry the bloated wood from the frame and push the door inwards. Uh, and on the other side, uh, the room is actually lit. Oh. What else do we see beyond that? Uh, as Ardent steps into the room, 
you see uh, a succubus and three imps. So I was right. <laughs> How strange. You see our imminent demise. What? What are you? What are you fellas doing here? It's a bit strange. Just chilling. One second. Is this one of your friends, Goose? I don't know any of these people. I mean, it's a bit weird that they're here, you know, after all this time. An old girlfriend, perhaps. <laughs> she uh, could be my old girlfriend, if you know what I mean. <laughs> you see the succubus and the three imps standing before what looks to be a uh, an adventurer, but their wrists are locked up in shackles against the opposite wall. Um, and the succubus is the first to sort of peer over her shoulder with a curious look uh, as she makes out the entering party. She goes, oh, looks like more have arrived. Hello. Is there another way into this room, by the way? Or is uh, this just a clo- let, me, let me just take you all to the map. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, bum, bum. Uh, too late to close the door. Bing bong. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, wrong room. No, this is a room full of useful things like information and people to interrogate. And kill. And you can make girlfriends. Well, well the, the monster, of course. <laughs> uh, and you then the adventure. Them. Just talk to them. That's right. And, you know. Give them your soul. Now yeah, hold on to that. They can keep the adventurer though. Like if he can't save himself, that's his problem. <laughs> that's pretty mean. Uh, <laughs> uh, hi, druid. <laughs> Druids aren't inherently mean. Listen, I can intimidate him quite well if we can keep him alive. If he won't, doesn't want to talk, I mean, he's the one who's already chained to a wall. What's he gonna do? Deny us? We could get him to join the book. No, that's more mouths to feed. What makes you think we're poor? What makes you think we need to feed another mouth? Well, because I want that's... more members. How about that? Uh, don't argue with the boss, man. At any rate, uh, the Cyclops kind of looks over at you, Ardent, and just goes, Could you wait, like... 30 minutes. I'm finishing up work here. Yeah, the, the adventurer, though, upon seeing you guys in the doorway, goes, Please! You've got to help me! And what's in it for us? Uh... I, I don't know. What do you want? What's your name? Danny. Do you know a guy named Ed? No. Do you know a guy who looks sallow and has gray hair and is just a bit creepy looking? No, I, I I came in here with just me and three other members of my party. What happened to the rest of them? Kind of gives a look. I'm afraid his friends won't be here to join him. Are they dead? Oh, uh. I think I know. Like, did they die? No, uh, I don't think they're dead. I think they're the imps. Oh, the the imps? Maybe. Is that what happened? No, no, they're not the imps. The it, these imps are mine. Now, if you okay. would please close the door and come back in what? thirty minutes, then we can. Can I watch? <laughs> can I? I'd like to a wave and say I also have an imp. Listen, we're not exactly she, opposed she to you in any way. <laughs> Could we work out some sort of deal? You provide us information and we just sort of like hash this out while you suck this man's soul out? The succubus looks surprised. <laughs> <laughs> As does a monitor. Like, he's not cool with this. Uh, Grief kind of doesn't really know what to think of this situation. I, he's not really. Would well, you want us coming in? He kind of wants to help this guy, but. You can, uh... 
Please? She kind of she kind of gives you a a studied look, kind of glancing about you. You can trust me. Oh, but we've only just met. Meta, um, I'm lying. Just for what? meta. Just for meta, in case you want me to roll. This is deceit. Okay. <laughs> uh, go ahead. Roll deception. I'm not good at it, so. You should have asked me to do it. <laughs> well, you should have spoken up, friend. She <laughs> 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 just goes. Yeah, no. Uh, just, just wait out there. Um, All right, I'm gonna kill you. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna kill you. All right, roll initiative. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> While she's standing there and just looks at you like, <sighs> fine, <laughs> fine. I that? guess I'll fight you guys. Ooh, okay. Five. I don't roll. 20 seems a bit laggy sometimes. Tonight. Yeah, you can click the number yeah, next to your name on the turn order and just change it yourself. <laughs> roll 20 has been very, very laggy recently. Oh, it's yeah, like more people are using it. Alright, so she goes on 23. Wowie. <laughs> okay. Alright. One, two, three. <laughs> what the? F Cheating. Hacks. <laughs> oh yeah, I have a ethical limo as well. Oh right. Uh, let me get let me get that guy. Uh, Earth boy. He could go through the wall, couldn't he? You could. Bam! Bam! Uh, Earth elemental. He is large, right? There are four tiles. Yeah. Two by two. Controlled by all players. I can move him. See that guy? Get your hands off my rocky boy. <laughs> <laughs> How do I input my turn order? I uh, on, on your sheet, just above the hit points in the center, click the word initiative. Make sure you have your token selected when you do it. seeing where it's asking me to give my initiative. <laughs> okay, so if you look at your me, sheet, your the, the large central area where you have your hit points, death saves, hit dice, all that. Uh, um, just oh above that. that it's right next to your armor class. Initiative speed. Like the, like the actual word. Oh. Uh. Okay. I'm trying to get yeah, on Oh you, have click, you have to click on the okay. word. Click gear. Or the word. You have to click the word. I mean, no, I'm, I already rolled. I'm trying to it, it put it on my token. So you have to have your token selected when you hit it. Yeah. Oh. Put it on the turn order because you're not part of it now. Yeah. So I see you rolled a 17. So uh, for the moment, GM, could you just add a turn for his token and we can add it in manual? Yep. Uh, I'm just gonna move him down because he's currently above the map for me. Okay, so you see yourself on the turn order now, Grief, right? No, no, he already yes. did it for you. I already done that. Then you're good to go. All right. Sorry. Next time I'll remember to click my token beforehand. No worries. Okay. Twenty has a definite learning curve. Excuses. All right. So she is the first to go. Um. Yeah, uh, you are going to make a wisdom saving throw, Arden. Guys, I'm sorry. <laughs> You're in a habit of getting mind control, dude. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. It's not my fault. Is dead at that? <laughs> I don't have any bonuses to it. It's random. But it's always bad. <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, again, she just... Very persuasively asks you... Dear, can you just 
close that door and make sure no one enters for, again, 30 minutes. All right. Theod I close Theod the door. Theodol, thank you. Door closes. Does that mean he starts acting like a doll now? <laughs> All right, everybody. It's me, Arden the doll. You know, I can't let you pass. I'm sorry. Arden's just got a nice, big, cheery grin. As though he's been love struck. He's a Barbie girl in a Barbie world. The woman behind this door is the love of my life. And those of you who are nearest to Arden can vaguely hear from the other side. Now, where were we? Oh, yes. No! No! <laughs> Death by uh... Snoo Snoo. <laughs> What do we Those do, guys? guys? Are going to move, but I'm not going to show it on the map. All right, merchant. Oh, is that to me? Yeah. No. no. Wait. Why did I change? What, what do you mean? It should be five. There you go. Oh. Uh. I'm on it then. Uh, again. Monitor just... Uh, uh, he has nothing. I don't have to spell prepped. <laughs> I can't let you pass, my friend. I'm sorry. My love doesn't Let's want see you seeing. Greater Resto does anything. <laughs> Greater Resto? Um, what if, Charmed, yes. Yep. You're an expensive leader, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, that certainly works. So, um, Ardent... You owe me 100 gold. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> she tricked me! Oh, I can't believe... Those faithful feelings of love slowly ebb and fade away. Oh, Falling for her feminine wilds, Ardent? It's only the 31st time I've ever felt that. <laughs> As the party's supply of diamond dust... Well, we'll have to buy more. <laughs> what a shame. Oh, I, everybody's stuck in the hallway. Okay. So that okay. was a lot of uh, Alright. Grief. Okay. Well. So, here are my options. I could go into the room using Ethereal Stab and be alone to fight the imps. Or I could wait for Arden to be a deer and open the door again for us. What a, what, a, what would a badass black book member do? Badass black book member would walk through the fucking door and start kicking ass. But this is your bed. <laughs> You're gonna lie. In it. How is it? I just got I just got spelled on, dude. It's not my fault. You the one who jumped run, jump right in combat. You're like, let's go, bitch. As the turn is spent arguing. <laughs> no, no, okay. Alright. See, now I'm debating. If I don't go in there, are, are the imps going to attack the dude? Or is she just trying to suck out his soul? Mm. Snap decision. Uh. What would your character think to do? Mm. Giving you ten more seconds to decide. Uh, my character is going to do what any person like him would do, and he's, he's going to go through the he's going to go through the door. Okay. So I'm going to walk through the door like a ghost boy. Okay. You, you're doing your ethereal step. Yeah. Okay. Uh, then you end up in the room. All right, and so then last for oh, gone. You can you can click on your token and use the arrow keys to move yourself. That's right. I'm going to you, walk. You can use the arrow keys. Oh yeah, I didn't even know right that. Right there, and make it to where I got distance between the things that are going to attack me. So. Okay, now that you enter the room, that imp has moved there. And I draw my rapier. Okay. 
but I kind of keep it in. in well, I mean, yes. if this succubus still wants to talk, I don't really have my rapier in a fashion like I'm already ready to stab you. Yeah, okay. as you enter the room, one of the imps go, Ah, uh, boss, someone just walked through the door. It's like, I'm busy. Just keep, just keep him busy. <laughs> like the worst telemarketers ever interrupting her meal right now. Yeah, you, uh, and as you kind of step into the room, you see that she's got these long uh, fingernail protrusions from her hands just uh, gripping around the... Uh, right side of the man's chest. And he yes. seems to be groaning in pain. Okay. Grief isn't like that. Grief's gonna end that. That's not gonna happen. Anyway, I'm gonna end my turn. Okay. Oh, actually, before 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 that, I'm gonna <laughs> go ahead and open the fucking door back. <laughs> okay. This door's open. I, I, I just kick it open. Anyone on the other side, sorry. Uh, so it was a push door. It was a push door. <laughs> <It's> push door. <laughs> it was a push door. Okay, so then I turn around and I gently open it. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> Smack. So, so does Ethereal Step cost an action? Um, let me make sure that this is the first time I've ever used it. Um, I think so. Maybe. You can use this feature once, last for three rounds. Um, it doesn't mention it being uh, at the real step, no action, so it doesn't take an action. I can just do it. Oh, so it's a free action. Free action. Cool. Oh, okay. So you you still have the rest of your movement, uh, which looks to be five feet, and you have an action. Okay. Well, what can I do? Do you have anything that's ranged? I am going to cast a blood right on my uh, on my weapon, crimson okay. right, um, right of the storm. All right. Do I need to roll anything? Uh, no, and it's okay. a bonus. It's a bonus action, so I can take another action too. Uh, uh, correct. I am going to use um, a blood curse of the anxious on the succubus. All right. What does she need to roll? Um, it just says until the end of your next turn, all creatures have advantage on charisma or intimidation checks at a target creature within 30 feet. Um, oh, okay. So, I'm going what, to. What oh. kind of is, does it have a save, or is it just? It just happens. I think it just happens. It doesn't mention anything about having to make a savings throw. Uh, right. Let's see. What ability is this? Blood um, right of the anxious. Blood curse of the anxious. Blood curse of the anxious. I see. I haven't ever played a, a blood hunter up to level ten, so I these these abilities are kind of new to me too. Uh, uh, as a bonus action, you magnify the adrenaline in the body of a creature 30 feet. You make them self of influence. Uh, until the end of your turn, all creatures have advantage on charisma, intimidation checks directed at the creature. Okay, so it, ju it just happens. It just happens. It just works. It just works. All right. So I'm going to make an intimidation um, check. We're going to try to intimidate her to make her, um, you know, turn her attention off of this uh, fellow here who's getting his, his soul sucked out. Really get her and her imps shaken in their boots. And okay. Roll we'll intimidation. Roll an intimidation check. Oh. <laughs> okay. You make her very uh, indeed. <laughs> indeed. Uh, she retracts her claws right out of the man's chest and kind of lets out a 
A sputtery gasp, blood trickling from his lip. She kind of stands upright. She goes, okay. <laughs> I see I have your attention now. You have to pay Indeed the you have. If you want to get into the man's soul. Okay. So, I guess everyone else can uh, file in. All right. I, 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 I didn't have any kind of big speech prepared for the intimidation. <laughs> really, I do, but that, I, I don't. You, well, you certainly got her attention, and she's no longer focused on sucking the soul out of the adventurer. Are we still in combat, then? Oh, well... I, she I, still is taking a combative stance against the rest of you. But not me? No, you included. Oh. Just because First, she's anxious doesn't mean she isn't going to fight you. This is true. So I'm going to end my turn there. Alright, Goose. Okay. So... I uh, got mobile, so I've got 40 feet of movement. So I'll mm -hmm. get in alongside uh, Grief here. Uh, as the elemental pops through the wall, Impede's with me. Uh, I will, following Grief's lead, uh, in a sort of commanding, booming voice, tell her to stop what she's doing. It'd be awesome if this was and the exact opposite. Surrender. That's a better idea than I had. True. True. Uh, Alright, roll intimidation. Oh, that's that's not okay. Good. That's pretty good. Uh, the imps seem to be waiting on her command. So they kind of look to her expectantly. She seems... She's, she, she looks to be uh, at a crossroads as to how to approach this situation. Ardent. <laughs> Two time and... <laughs> And see Arda into the room. Comes into the room. All right, you succubus bitch. <laughs> this is the the last time. You know how many times my mind has been dominated in this. It's been like this is the fifth time. The same thought I know. I'm gonna chop your head off. I'm gonna run at this imp. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, Arda, let's, let's let's not be too hasty. I'm a rage. Sit down. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> a very appropriate rage. <laughs> I cut his head off. Oh, yes. <laughs> Gone <laughs> in a single sweep. Look at all you hit. And then I cut the other him imps off beside me. Uh. Also dead. That's my turn. Yeah, you <laughs> see like this slow dawning look of horror reach across the uh, succubus's face. Merchant. Yes, hello. <laughs> <laughs> How do I do the... Uh, uh movement thing to like control how far am I actually going by clicking. Uh is it right click now? While you're while you're dragging your token around, tap the Q key. Oh it's Q again? Mm -hmm. Oh I love the hot the hot key changes. Yeah. Fair well first it was space and then it was uh, right click and I guess now it's Q. Right click Q or at the same time. Right off. I think I'll just move the 
Uh, again, I, <laughs> I think I take the other key was leaving. So I suggest you back down before you end up like your friends over there. The boss is rather pissed off. Succubus just lets just... out a huff. <clears throat> Every time I come here, I'm interrupted. She kind of turns over her shoulder to give the adventurer a look. Oh. Better luck next time, sweetie. And she disappears. A puff of smoke. What about the last... Get the imp! Get the imp! Uh, the imp looking around at the room of intimidating foes uh, squeaks out a little fart and then... Could I throw my sword and cut his head off before... <laughs> there he goes. He just kind of... <laughs> So... Alright, combat's over. <laughs> Just for good measure, Alana will throw a burst of flame where she was standing. Okay. <laughs> uh, the adventurer, who's got like <laughs> uh, five fingernail size holes kind of roughly around where his heart would be. Just sort of Shimmy's back. <laughs> I'm tired of having my mind controlled. I'm so tired of it. I want yeah, to it yeah. All right. <laughs> well, this is like the eighteenth time. Is he gonna move over to this man? Okay. Actually, while I'm at it, I'm just gonna use the Grim Cabal to. Uh, just heal a bit of damage while I'm out of combat. Hard I presume we're out of combat now, right? Over. Yeah, you guys are out yeah, of are, combat. Are. Yeah, one yeah, It's pretty good. Can I free him from his chains? Uh, you can. Uh, the, 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 the shackles he's been set up in aren't in very good condition anyways. It only I takes free. like a just a firm grip Especially with your strength, just to kind of pry him open. He kind of rubs his yeah. uh, wrists. Then I, oh. I set him on it. Being held by the bonds of love stronger than any shackle. I'm also going to, uh, what's the card? Gr use the Grim Cabal on the corpses of the imps to take their souls, basically. Okay. <laughs> In front they of all the know about it. Okay. Oh, yeah. He's already seen it. All right. <laughs> well, friend, what's your name? Uh, Danny. Danny, that's right. You too. So, did all your friends die? Kind of looks down at himself. I. Well, yeah. yes, I'm. I'm quite positive that they are no longer among the living. And you were here for. Oh, we entered in early this morning. To get treasure, I assume? Uh, yeah, I, I presume that's why you're here. How much did you pay to get in here? Paid 250 gold. Map? No, no I couldn't. Fee. Yeah, I couldn't afford the map. Shame. How would you like the opportunity to join a prestigious and venerable organization of people? Should I get paid? With free healing. Uh, you get paid a rate that will be less than us because we're certainly more experienced than you. But we'll start you off at the uh, beginner's, you know, level. And then as you go on, your pay will rise. If you do... Of course, perform jobs to the standard of the black. If it's all the same to you, I'd actually, uh, I'd like to get out of here. Well, this is like a limited time offer of right now, or no. Yeah, but I, I don't want to stick around. I uh, almost died. Try... I need to go home right. and rethink my life. I could send you to get some healing and send you to a place that will hold nothing but friendly faces for you. 
Oh, and okay. and you wouldn't even probably get roughed up by the company people back at the entrance for whatever you have. Oh shit! I didn't even think of that. That's wrong. Is so, there... Danny, how about you come to me? How about you come with me to this corner over here, and we can have a discussion. Are there any caveats or any quid pro quos I should know about? Oh yeah, you have to give up your name, like your whole name, and make up a new, an alias. I'm Ardent. This is Grief. That's Merchant. I'm Anita's back there. That's I'm Gooses. A I'm Anita. I'm Anita. It's all the same, really. Grief gives Danny a uh, empty hand and like wave. He doesn't like actually wave his hand. He just golf clap of waves. Ah. <laughs> uh. Uh, what what other option do I have? I fell into one trap, and now I've come to fall into another. Well, I don't think you'll think of it as a trap when you get there, because it's really a lot better than probably your shitty life right now. Come on! <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> That's so brutal. <laughs> it does have the benefit of being an alternative to imminent demise. Not only that, but boom. See you. Roll. Roll persuasion ardent, but disadvantage. That was such a good clap that I don't even care if I lose this noob. <laughs> <laughs> He's just gonna shake his head. I must decline. I just, I just want to get out, but. You did. You have saved my life, and for that, I do owe you a debt. He uh, reaches into his backpack. Let's see. And provides us a handwritten map of everywhere he has been so far and the way out of here. And gives us a <laughs> lesser healing potion. He, yeah, he gives you, like, the baseline healing potion. Wow. It's, it's not much, but it's all I can offer. All right, well, enjoy your life of mediocrity, Dan. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Yeah. Go on. Doodle. He's hurt. going. He's going to die. Goose. Goose. Yes. Come here. Goose, could you uh, would you go take care of him? Take care of him? Yeah, he's gonna tell the guards we're here. Want me to kill him? We could Goose, just he... ask him not to do that, because he owes us his life. I mean, if you want to take care of him that way, then go ahead. Take care of him can mean many things. I'll go after him. Okay. Grief is gonna, uh, just kind of peer around the corner as Goose, uh, enters. Oh, he's gonna, yeah. Uh, telepathically to this guy, uh, I think you should reconsider or we'll have to do some damage. He kind of pauses, yeah. looks around, and kind of looks at the Kenku. That was super vague. Was that, was, uh, was that you? Pointing, pointing a wand at him now. Uh, he raises his hands and surrender. What? You should what? really consider his offer. What? Yes? <laughs> <laughs> roll, roll intimidation. <laughs> can I, can I assist that intimidation? Uh, sure. I mean, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Are you going to intimidate him into the black book? <laughs> I kind of just didn't want to say that we were here, but all right. Let's kill two. I think Merlin's just <laughs> taking, taking his mask off and is rubbing the bridge of his fucking nose at this point. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, <laughs> Google gobble, Google gobble. I mean, when he's held at one point, it's very convincing. <laughs> was, uh, oh, <laughs> you're not really giving me much of, a, much of an option here, are you? All right, so get back in here before I feed you to the golem. Uh, uh, and you all see a very defeated-looking Danny re-enter the room. Now, Danny, what are you doing back here? Grief blocks the entrance. <laughs> he begins to sob. <laughs> what? What do I have to do? <laughs> oh, did you reconsider the offer? I, I mean, I just t told him to tell you not to tell the guards that we were here, but... Uh, come on, Roy. <laughs> I, I came into this dungeon... <laughs> because I wanted to find my fortune. Come on, Danny. Come on. <laughs> Over here. Come on, Iden's Iden's beckoning. Now, Danny, <laughs> you're gonna have to. What new name would you like, my friend? Out of here. <laughs> All right, out of here. You just have to sign that with your blood. No, I, I... Right, slash open his palm. Ah! <laughs> there you go. Just write that down in this here book. Perhaps timid or terrified would be more appropriate. Scared. Art it materializes the black book. There you go, my friend. He opens it up to a blank page. Just write your name down there. <laughs> he just uh, sort of leans over towards grief. We are definitely the good guys, by the way. <laughs> well, He's sobbing to himself as he writes his name on the page, <laughs> looking back over his shoulder at Goose. <laughs> So well, out of here. Company I had. You sit. Me. Oh, out of here, aren't you? <laughs> Ooh, that's a good one. <laughs> it closes the book, and then uh, I'm going to open it up again. Okay. And uh, take out a page. Uh. Yeah, the page for the uh, block cleaner key. Yep. Same location of the book. I'm not sure remember. Da, 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 da. Basically, I want to send them to the company headquarters. Okay. And I'll say, you'll thank us later before he goes. I know things are looking bleak right now, but really, things do get better. They do. You'll love it there. It's in an it's in the astral plane on a floating city. It's beautiful. Grief says, having chosen the name he has. <laughs> he just looks down at the piece of paper, eyes puffy and red. <laughs> we okay. just recently built a castle for the company. Look, just look for Enigma or you know, any of the other people who look like they're in charge and they'll get you a room. Tell them I didn't send you. He just, he activates the slip and begins to become entombed in a cocoon of pages right out of the book until he ultimately disappears with a final right. distant he, wail. Like, the whole time he, he's, he's disappearing, I'm, I'm waving. <laughs> <laughs> All right, out of here is... And kids? <laughs> out of here is out of here. <laughs> What a wuss. Why did we hire him? Yeah, why did we do this? Well, everyone, everyone, well everyone, everyone starts from somewhere, don't they? I mean, look at Greensock. Did you ever think he'd be where he is now? We could have just let him go. <laughs> it would have been fine. I mean, <laughs> I tell Gooseys to just, you know, but Goose, well, good, good job, Gooseys. Your recruitment efforts, you know, they really work there. I may have uh, misunderstood your instruction. It's all right. It all worked out in the end. <laughs> you know, new member. Gives you definitely getting that member recruitment bonus. I've been talking about implementing. Uh, let me just write that down. <laughs> yeah, please do keep me at my word. That does exist and is totally a thing. Duly noted. 
so folks, which way are we going now? I think that way is, uh, the way he came is probably the way out, so we don't want to go that way. Um, our monitor's way of tracking doesn't tickle as much as mine. Is it a good thing? No, but I do have to concentrate it on it. Constantly. Griefus is gonna, I guess, hmm. There's a doorway by Goose, so he's going to go and maybe peer down that hallway. See if he can see anything. Uh, the one uh, to the northwest of Goose? One are, you, right. are you talking about the... Okay. Uh, that is a door. The door. Right, I didn't get over here. Have you tried opening it? I haven't, but I might need you, just in case. I mean, that was kind of mean. Um, <laughs> well, maybe. Maybe you're right. Here, uh, let me try to uh, open the door. Does the door look special like the other one before I do that? Or is it just a normal? Uh, this is an iron door. It's a door made out of iron. Can you break iron, Arden? Probably not. Is Probably. There, is there a knob? Oops, shit. Uh, but you will check what the lock's like. Yeah, let's look at what the lock's like. Uh, Pretty complicated looking lock. Bitch. But you can also... Uh, roll a perception. Okay. Uh, merchant. Okay. Um, you see, you can see the little scratches around the lock. Hmm. Uh, I still have Ethereal Step going for the next um, two rounds, I think. Uh, so could I poke my head Have we door? tried opening it? Uh, I would say that would have worn off by now, because two rounds is like 12 seconds. Hold on, guys. I'll check the compass. I'm going to poke the... Uh the sword again. Or okay. axe, it was. Grief, if you want, I could just pull on the door and see if it's open. That's... This is true. Alright. Because... Uh, axe is... pointing you up. Oop, let me, ch let me change my color. Yeah, that's a bit... Uh, axe is pointing up, and... This way. Okay. Goose would head to this door. I believe well, we'll find Ted this way. Possible, though. Do you mean like. Only if above? stairs are in that room, because we, we do have to go up one floor, I believe. That's all the indication I can really give you with the, what I have. Mm. Just kind of jabs a finger in the rough direction the sword was. Yeah, the axe was pointing. Well, it's a better lead than, well, nothing. So I suppose we should try that direction first. Uh, anyone yeah, disagree? Consider a well-locked iron door. Could house some sort of treasure. This is true. Grief moves out of Merchant's Way in case he wants to pick that. I Can tried I to open the door. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so just, just for a little bit of, uh, clarification. These are just regular archways. Okay, so those yeah, are... Yeah, the, one, the ones with the squares are doors. Um, the dotted ones are, uh, like, uh, like cells. Uh, they're bars. Yeah, barred. Okay. Bar Is barred. this door locked? Yes. Merchant. Well, if you didn't rudely interrupt. I just want to see if it was open. I think I opened it. <laughs> nice job. Uh, <laughs> it's, it, it's, it's very easy for you. <laughs> hey, you took the hinges off. I didn't think of that. <laughs> he just kind of um, steps aside and he just... Because he's, he's done it so well, he's really smug about it. He's just like, after you. All right. Well, I can go first. 
So in this room, let's see. The leader leads after all and such. No, no, no. Uh, the floor is covered with humanoid bones. And a pile oh. of rotting wood lies in the northeast corner of the room. Fellas, there's a bunch of bones in here. That doesn't sound fun, Arden. Yeah. Grief and shouts from the wood. As you as you step in there, Ardent, I would like you to make a Let's see, DC, uh, okay, it's a dexterity saving throw. I'm good at those. Apparently not. It's a giant kill <laughs> falls from the air. Oh, you all enter them there? Uh, I need dexterity ah. saves from Goose and Merchant. Yeah, someone said bones. Lost family members. All right, so Ardent and Goose, <laughs> you guys fail. Uh, as the floor sends a horrible shock running through your legs. So I do like a short hop to avoid it. <laughs> yep. Uh, you take oh. eight lightning damage. Uh, I don't like this room. Uh, all, all the little bones suddenly uh, begin to jiggle and fester about as the electricity courses through the floor tiles. Oh, the jiggling. Uh, you gonna stay in the room? Um, no. Let's yes, back out. <laughs> <laughs> I, presume, I presume I take no damage from that, by the way. Uh, you take half damage, so four. Okay, half damage. What is evasion? You have well, evasion. If, you, if you wanted to I use evasion, evasion, you would still take two. No, oh, well. um, I'll take two then. Here's an idea. Um, could we make? Well, no, I don't think the golem could fit, but I don't think any of us could go in there without being shocked. Hmm. I mean, do we want to go in there? I mean, it, hmm. I suppose you guys didn't really have a chance to see if anything was really in there, did you? Well. There was a pile of rotten wood in the corner. Can we just oh. like peek ahead without actually going in? That's what I saw. It was like a rotten wood pile. I'm not sure if there was something important there or something, but you know. Well, there were a lot of bones, like you said. So at the same time, it's probably nothing. I mean, if well, you I presume like the death. bones are the people who got shot to death. That's likely. Perhaps the living stone would not be quite as susceptible. That's right. He could drag their pile of rotten wood to us. Yeah, but could he fit through the door? Well, he could go through the walls. Finding that there's an imp that can fly over the floor. This is true. I hadn't, hadn't taken into account worm dirt. Goose, send one of your boys in there and just check around that rotten pile. All right. Wormed up, you're up. All right. <laughs> Worm Dirt flaps his little imp wings and enters the room. You just want him to investigate? Uh, investigate the rotten wood pile over there. Okay. Poke uh, it with, he... the little, uh, with his little trident thing. Uh. He goes over and he finds digging after after some digging into the rotten wood. He finds some uh, gloves. Oh, gosh, we gloves. Um, the gloves look in good condition. Uh, they appear almost like a like a regal set of mitts, in a very royal red with uh, gold embroidery along the cuff. Uh, just, these look pretty good. Yeah, they look a bit gaudy for me. Anyone know how the magic? Are they magic? Rondrick gives a sniff. They smell magical. Alright, anybody go 
Any way to identify him? Not you would give a sure go that. Okay, I'm a we'll... magic guy. <laughs> the gloves are magical. I do not have any identify spell. Okay. But I, I can do not, Arcana. I do not recognize the, what they might be. It does not seem natural. I'm sure if we keep them for a period of eight hours or, or some such, that we'll know what they are, naturally, somehow, or just weighing them about. So, as a, as Worm Dirt kind of brings the gloves back over, and you, Goose, take a moment to sort of experiment with them. Um, first of all, they don't require any attunement. Oh. No. You're, you're able to immediately sort of mess with them. But unfortunately... Uh, the only effect that you're able to find is that oh. as as you sort of slip them onto your hands, uh, you can will them into looking into whatever kind of gloves you would like. Oh, to a, mi to a, to a minor extent. So you can Ow. change the cuffs to have like a blue rim. You can change the royal red to something like a verdant green. Uh, grief, you look like you need new clothes. How wonderful. Really? Gloves of changing design. Delicately put them in Grief's hand. Grief takes off his old gloves, which were a little um, bloodied and a little nasty. He, even though he washed them a few days ago, they're still very stained. He, Despite that, he puts the old gloves in his robes and he puts the, the new ones on and grabs them by their cuffs and tightens them to make sure they fit on the fingers right uh awesome. at first they feel a little loose but uh after a few seconds they sort of begin to form fit along your hands when that happens he kind of runs his he waggles his fingers as he feels it happen and then cracks his fingers and um then I guess he wills the color of them to change to fit what he's currently wearing. So they are now a white. Um, it's got a white cuff with a red trim on that cuff and just black fingers, black hands. All right. They they take that altercation. Uh, absolutely worth getting it educated for. <laughs> yep. All right. <laughs> Let's go to what goose. Let's go to what goose's point. All right. So as you yes. set off deeper into the ruins of Weathertop, I think we will pause for tonight and resume right. next week. Yep. A special what? shout out to Adam, who's joining us as a viewer. He is one of the players from our Saturday game. Thank hey, you for hello. Hanging out. Hey. Hey, hello. Thank you for oh, running, Mr. GM, sir. Mm-hmm. Yes, thank you. For the aiming as usual. <laughs> you know... Uh, does, does next week work for everyone? It's the 17th. I Looks doubt I'm going anywhere. It does. <laughs> oh, course. it does? It works. I have to go to a mass gathering of people for that day. Yeah, exactly. 